Hello Spain, my name is Ala Kovgen and I am writer, director and editor of Cunningham 3D film that you are going to watch. I'm excited that um, our distributor film in manages to release it theatrically. Uh, even though I'm not able to be there with you because of the pandemic. Um, I was asked to record a, a bit of an introduction. Uh, the film has been distributed in 33 countries and um, I've participated in many question and answer sessions so I wanted to summarize um, and answer a few questions that you might have in advance. So people often ask why Nurse Cunningham? And I always say that I never wanted to make a film about Nurse Cunningham because he's a kind of choreographer who works in space so much. He would have 16 dancers going to different directions and you cannot frame a single shot. But um, a film Pina came out by Wim Wenders about legendary um, German choreographer Pina Bausch. And um, it was a 3D film and Wim used 3D in this very interesting way. You could. Uh, feel very close to the dancers, as, as though you could step inside the dance. And that really interested me as somebody who has been uh, involved in dance film collaborations for over uh, 20 years. So this coincided with the last performances of the Merce uh, Cunningham Dance Company, which closed uh, on December 31st, um, 2011. And I was sitting there at the Brooklyn Academy of Music looking at those 14 dancers um, going different directions and that really hit me that MERS and 3D could be a good fit um, primarily because they work with space so much uh, and articulate relationships between bodies and space I think the best 3D film will be the one that has no cuts and how great for the dancers they can actually dance um, so that's how it began it began from this idea to use technology to translate uh, Merce's ideas into cinema with capital C. So it's not a biopic, it's really uh, a kind of a journey through his work. Um, the another question that often asked is who are the dancers in the film? Um, when I got the permission from Merce Cunningham Trust to um, make the film, I was very lucky to work with um, Robert Swinston and Jennifer Goggins as my directors of choreography. Robert worked with Merce for 32 years and Jennifer worked for 12. Jennifer became my really right-hand woman. We've been together for seven years making this film. Uh, and one of the motivations also to make the film was, um, you know, when I was watching those dances uh, for the last time, I felt like they would have no opportunities to perform this work again. And I felt that's incredibly unfair to them because they are the last generation that carry Mercer's legacy inside their bodies. There would be no more people like that. And I wanted to give them another life, an afterlife. So uh, people, the dancers in the film, um, most of them, except for one, trained with Cunningham himself. Uh, he brought them up. I mean, they are, in, for me, in some way heroes because we, uh, had an idea to make this film in 2013, but um, in 2012, and had rehearsals in 2013, but we ended up shooting this only in 2018. So um, we were worried with Jennifer that we would we would have nobody to shoot uh, with. But um, once they learned that the, the shoot is confirmed, um, they actually went back six months prior to the uh, shooting and took a class, took a kind of class, um, kind of technique class to get their bodies conditioned and get them in shape to perform Mercer's work. Um, another question that often asks is why is this period between 1942 and 1972? Um, as I began researching who Mercer was, the pe this period really struck me the most because uh, during that time he was not a famous choreographer but the young struggling dancers, uh, dancer trying to figure out what he was doing. And the spirit he had in the, per the sense of perseverance um, was just remarkable. I was incredibly moved but how he could continue despite all the struggles and all the obstacles he had without any support, without audience, without press, but just surrounded by his friends and collaborators who basically gave him faith and hope 
and desire and kind of supported him to continue the work. And I thought that was uh, sort of a forgotten period. That was uh, somewhere in the past and many people remembered Merce as an old man. And so I just wanted to bring that time back. The other question is often about locations. Um, so Robert, uh, Jennifer and I um, looked at 80 works between 1942 and 1972, uh, and we picked 14. Most of them were collaborations with Robert Rauschenberg um, because he was very much part of this story during that time. And then um, we identified different ideas behind those dances behind those choreographies and we would think about them in cinema terms because if you think about cinema cinema never thinks in theatrical stages it thinks in places and spaces um, so uh, for instance if Merce made a dance based on the action of falling like Winter Branch we would think okay how would cinema think about falling and we would uh, decide because you know in cinema you don't have to uh, see falling to experience it uh, it's all about creating an illusion so we would choose to put it on a rooftop for instance if it's a dance uh, that explores idea of layering like rune uh, so if things happen in the foreground background and middle ground uh, we uh, would we would we put it in the woods because there the dances become uh, part of the um, landscape uh, that um, like another layer in the landscape. So the idea gets much more clearly articulated. So that's how we worked. And uh, we shot this film as in only 18 days, um, despite all these years of work. Um, and um, because originally we wanted to shoot in New York, but we couldn't, so we ended up in um, uh, Germany. Uh, but even you know, looking for locations all the time. We thought about those ideas that we try to communicate um, on screen. Um, then finally, um, the question that always um, sort of comes is, you know, is there a difference between 2D and 3D version? I think there, there are a little bit two different movies because in 3D you really get absorbed by the dances and by the experience, you even forget the story. Oftentimes, people say that I don't remember what happened with Merce. I just remember being immersed into this world of his choreography. In 2D, the story comes through uh, also in a different way. That it's it's it. That's what people mostly hold on to, uh, despite the fact that I do think that it works um, in 2D and 3D differently. So if you have an opportunity to see it in 2D, please go see it in the movie theater in 3D also. Um, I think you can bring your children, you can bring your grandparents. Yeah, I don't think you need to know anything about MERS or dance for that matter to experience it. Um, and finally to end is that one thing that MERS taught me is how to live with a sense of uncertainty, which I think today is incredibly um, you know, important. And the reason he had to live with the sense of uncertainty because he always worked with his body and our body changes every day. It's different. It's, it, it's aging. It's, um, you know, it, it, it has all these different states that we go through and Merce embraced that. Uh, he embraced that, he accepted it and he dealt with it. He was never afraid to take a risk and never afraid to get himself into something completely unknown. There's one quote that never made into the film, but I would like to share with you. So Merce used to say, you have to love dancing to stick with it. It gives you nothing back, no manuscripts to store away, no paintings to hang on walls in the museums, no poems to be printed or sold, nothing but that single fleeting moment when you feel alive. Please enjoy, thank you.